Happy Tuesday, everyone. It's the end of a tantalizing and perhaps terrific Tuesday for you. And I hope that you're beginning to wind down from what has perhaps been a long and exhausting day. Today, we're talking a lot about failure. I mean, as you think about it, we've had a relationship with failure for the vast majority of our lives. And when I start to think about how we handle failure, I realize that a lot of times failure is not looked at as a positive thing. When you think about failure, when you think about giving your all, when you think about being vested, when you think about getting involved in something and the end result is just not what you desire, what are some of the emotions that you grapple with? What are some of the questions and the thoughts that circulate through your head? What are some of the things that pull you down and make you just want to throw it all away? I mean, failure has been with me from as far back as I remember. And as I started to reframe my thoughts about failure, I had to teach myself to understand that failure is just not final. And that success sometimes doesn't always equal winning. And that may sound pretty weird to you. I mean, Degrasso, what do you mean success does not always equal winning? Well, we can get success out of failure. There are opportunities for us to grab lessons away from the areas that we've failed in to make our next attempt better. And so success is a part of failure if we're able to take those lessons, implement them, and make our next attempt, whatever it is that we're trying to achieve, so much better. Now I want to share with you my very first recollection of failing. And I was probably about 11 years old in sixth grade. And way back then, one of the methods that the school that I attended used to select their prefects was that you had to sit an exam. It was a three-page exam with questions on both sides of the paper. And back in the sixth grade, I remember being a sharp young lady. Um, you know, as a matter of fact, throughout my entire school journey, I don't remember having to study, and so I was pretty confident going into the exam. I looked forward to being a prefect. I looked forward to wearing my special uniform, being able to be a student that was upright, and I stood out in my uniform, and people would know that, hey, this girl is a stellar student, and she is a leader. And so I entered the exam room eagerly, sat down, took my exam, wrote my name, Duquesa Dean, on each page. Just in the event the pages got separated, they would know that those papers belonged to me. And so after I placed my name on the papers, I went through each paper carefully, answering the questions as best as I possibly could. And I was finished the exam so quickly. And as I looked around the room, I wondered why were other people taking so long to complete this exam? And so I let the teacher know that I was finished with the exam. And she's like, Degrassa, are you sure? And I was like, yes, I'm sure, I'm finished, it's all done. And, and here is my paper. She's like, Duquesa, please take the paper, look it over again, use the extra time just to make sure that your answers are correct. And I was so confident that I had written the right answers and that I had given my absolute best to that exam. And I knew, walking out of that exam room, that I would be a prefect in the next school year. Fast forward to the beginning of the new school year and you probably thought it right. I was not selected to be a prefect. And can I tell you why? Even though I had taken the time to carefully write my name on top of each of those papers so that in the event it got separated, I had neglected to complete one section of the exam on the back side of one of those papers. And because I did not complete the exam in its entirety, my score was not high enough for me to be given the designation of prefect in my primary school. I was so disappointed. Not only was I disappointed, I was embarrassed. I was embarrassed because 
all of my friends would be wearing their special uniforms and they would have special responsibilities and they would be seen as leaders and recognized as leaders in school and I would, I would not be. As a young girl, that really hit my confidence hard. And I sat down and thought about how could I act, absolutely let this happen? How could I have been so careless? And even though I've been given the prompting by my teacher more than once to double check my paper in my confidence and in my self-assuredness and certainty, I neglected to do so. That was one of the very first lessons I got with failure at 11 years of age. And can I tell you, I've never failed an exam. I didn't fail that one, but I've never not answered all of the questions on an exam paper ever since. That failure taught me to be extra careful, to use the extra time to look over my paperwork, to make sure that my calculations were right, to not be overconfident, to listen to the advice of those who were older than me, who were prompting me to take a second look. But throughout that entire sixth grade year, I interacted with my friends who were all wearing their prefect uniforms, and it was a constant and daily reminder of the mistake that I made. A couple of things happen when we fail, you know, and it was easy at 11 years of age to allow these things to happen. First of all, when we fail, we have a tendency to blame other people. And in the example that I just used with you, there was nobody else for me to blame. No one else but myself. And so I had to take the responsibility for not doing the exam properly. There was no one that I could cast that blame on. The second thing that we do is we cover it up. And I'm not so happy to share with you that when my friends asked me why I wasn't a prefect, I really tried to cover up the fact that I made a mistake. I tried to hide the fact that I didn't complete the exam. I tried to hide the fact that it really was my fault because I was so embarrassed about it. How could I not be a prefect? And then the third thing that tend to happen when we have failure in our lives is that we just give up. We just give up on what it is that we're trying to accomplish. Well, I had no choice because there was only one exam for a prefect and I had not passed it. But I can tell you that I've felt all of those uh, emotions and responses to failure over the course of my life. Um, I got angry, extremely angry at my husband, at my ex-husband at this time, uh, when our marriage failed. I was young, naive, eager. And I entered our marriage with such high hopes that we would build a great future together, that we will have a family, that we would enjoy all of the things that you know you saw in romance, movies, we'd have a real happy life. But reality had other plans. For one, I was an inexperienced young girl. Two, I wasn't really a good cook. <laughs> Three, I was not properly trained how to be a wife. And four, my, my ex-husband, who is a real uh, provider for our family, had some issues as well in his life that he needed to address. And so all of those, all of those things caused challenges in our marriage. Our marriage eventually ended, and I was devastated. I was so devastated that I tapped out. To be honest with you, I gave the marriage three opportunities. I left once and I went back. I left twice and I went back. And the third time I left, I made the determination that, you know what, this is it. And I was severely depressed. I remember laying down in bed at my mother's house, not being responsive to anyone because I could not believe that my life, me, my life, my marriage was in the state that it was in. I felt like such a failure. I felt that I'd let myself down, that I'd let my family down, that I'd let my ex-husband down, even though he contributed to the reason why our marriage is not together today. I felt that I let my children down. And because I had those emotions just churning inside of me, I was in a severe state of depression. 
I did not even want to see people, talk to people, because I could not believe that my life was such a failure. Another time that I experienced failure was in cooking. Listen, sister girl could put a whole party together using everything out of the frozen section. <laughs> There's frozen lasagna, there are frozen vegetables that you just throw inside the microwave. Sister girl was just a queen at producing a massive meal from everything frozen in the grocery store. Cooking was not an area that I was strong in many years ago. I'm much better today. But I had to learn how to be a good cook. And that took a process, trust you me. It was trial and error. Some days forgetting to put salt in the food. Some days not seasoning the pot. Some days just burning whatever was in the oven. But it was a process. And each time I failed at a dish, I, tried, I threw it out very quickly so that my family did not know that I even made an attempt to do it. I tried to cover it up because I didn't want people to know that I wasn't good at it, that I didn't do it well. And so I, I just threw it out and took the garbage outside so that nobody was aware that I'd even made the attempt. And so that's how we cover up. And then we give up. And one thing that was so important to me in my life was wanting to work with young girls. You know, after having such a traumatic life, I wanted to help young girls understand that they were valued, appreciated, loved, and if they had had any traumatic experiences in their lives, I wanted to help them move past those experiences. And I tried. I tried a few years ago, and it just did not work out. You know, there was a lot of doubt in my mind about my own ability. Not only was there doubt in my mind about my ability, I started to think about what if I fail? What will people think? And so I allowed those thoughts to saturate my mind and I gave that dream up. Well, a few years later, the dream rebirth and I'm continuing on that path, I'm happy to say, but I did give it up before I was able to fully embrace it and bring the program to the place that it is today. Failure is a constant part of our lives. I mean, from the time that we're born, we're being taught to do things. We do it well, we do some things average, we don't do things well at all. And so throughout all of our lives, we're being measured in some way by other people and by ourselves. When we go to school, our grades are our measurements. We get A's, B's, C's, D's, E's, and F's. And you know, we have celebrations and we rejoice when we get those A's. And when we get those F's, we feel like such a failure. And then we graduate from high school and we move on to college and then our GPAs start to uh, measure our success for us and we begin to associate who we are with the grades that we achieve. Whether we studied hard and took an exam and still got a C when we wanted that A, we beat ourselves up and we feel like such a failure even though we gave our best effort. And then when we leave college, we go into the work world and our grade now becomes a performance evaluation where we're being rated on the work that we do. If we do well, we get a high mark. If we don't do well, we get an average mark. If we do a poor job, chances are we'll eventually be fired because that's how we're being measured. And life just is a whole constant journey of success, of failure, of success, of failure. And so they all relate and go hand in hand together. And it's for this reason that we have to have a healthy look at what it means to fail successfully. And yes, you can fail successfully. I wanna share with you five tips that can help you fail successfully. Overcome the emotional struggle that you face when you don't meet your goals. When you do a good job or you give your best and it still doesn't give you the result that you want. Whether that's, you know, whether you failed at a relationship with your spouse, with your boyfriend, with your children, with your family members, whatever relationship it is that you, you're struggling with and it's failing, here are some tips that can help you. If you're not a good cook and you're trying, like whatever it is that you are trying to do in your life and you're not doing it as best as you envision it, it may not be that you're not giving your best effort. You may be giving your best effort, but you see a greater goal ahead of you. So here are those five tips that I promised you. The first tip is to choose improvement, which means to look at failure healthy and to reframe your mindset when you fail. 
What did you learn? What were some of the key points that you can take away from this lesson? What are the things in your marriage that didn't work so well? What are the things in your relationship with those that you're struggling in that relationship with that are not so good? How do you pull out those things? How do you remove them to make the relationship better? How do you not get into arguments? How do you honor your commitment? What are the things that you need to do? What didn't you do? So that you know what you need to do the next time that you get involved in a relationship or in your next interaction with your family or your child or your coworker. So choose improvement. My cooking journey was a journey of improvement, trust you me. And it was a trial and error, trial and error. Just keep going back at it and following a recipe. And so don't give up. Just keep going at it and taking the lessons every time that you fail and using the lessons to help you fail forward. So that's my first tip for you, to choose an improvement mindset. My second tip for you is to push past your comfort zones. Comfort zones are the death of success. When we sit in our comfort zones, we do things routine. Like when I was in grade six, I was in a comfort zone. I was confident, I was cocky, I knew my stuff, but I was too comfortable, too comfortable to even double check my own work. So we have to push past our comfort zones. Failure is success turned in. So every time you fail, figure out how you can push forward, how you can move the needle forward just a little. Because I want to shift your mindset from being goal oriented to being growth oriented. Your goals are for a lifetime. Yes, you may set timelines to them. And so you may want to accomplish a goal next week. But if you don't achieve that goal next week, does it mean that you can't attempt that goal again and try to achieve it the following week? So try to push past those limitations. There's so many ways. You know, one of my old managers used to tell me, you eat an elephant one bite at a time. And I, that's the same way it is as we face failure. We digest that one bite at a time and we keep pushing, we keep moving. There, wherever you live, wherever your house is, there are many ways of getting there. You can take any pathway. There are roads that connect to your house. You don't always have to go one way. That is an important lesson that you can get to your goal in many different ways. So don't be so focused on what's comfortable. Come outside of the box, shatter the box. There is no box. And so that's my second tip to you. Push past your comfort zone. My third tip is one of the hardest for me. I worked for years to master this, and this is to control your emotions. When we fail our emotions spiral, we start to talk bad to ourselves. We tell ourselves things like, you know, we're stupid, we shouldn't have tried that, why did you even do it? We really give ourselves a lot of negativity. So we have to try to control our emotions. You know what, that was a good first attempt. I didn't get to my goal, but I'm gonna try it again using the new knowledge that I have. Push past those limitations and control your emotions. Some of the ways that worked for me in controlling my emotions was journaling. I started to journal what I felt. I started to write down those negative emotions. Whenever I was telling myself that I was not successful, whenever I was telling myself that, you know what, you're dumb for even trying this, whenever I was telling myself that, you know what, relationships are not worth it, or that, you know, working along with people is just not worth it because they're so complex, I wrote all of those things down. And then next to them, I wrote the reason why they were lies, right? Those are not accurate. And so I had to prove to myself by controlling my emotions that it is possible. So I encourage you to journal. Additionally, I encourage you to use positive self-talk. We tell ourselves a lot of negativity. The most important voice you're gonna hear over your entire life is your own voice. Be kind to yourself. Tell yourself that it is possible. And even though today you may not be where you are, tomorrow is another opportunity to start again. The next minute is another opportunity to start again. So start reinforcing and affirming yourself, letting yourself know that you are valuable, that you are a gift to the world, that your talent is necessary, that your dreams are possible, that what you are trying to achieve will make a difference in your life and in the lives of other people. Look to counteract that self-talk 
um, and don't be negative. Stand in the mirror and tell yourself all of the important things that you need to know about you. You know, if you, if you don't believe you're beautiful, find all the things about you that are good. Do you like your lips? Do you like your eyes? What are the qualities about you physically that you love? And start being positive and loving towards yourself. Treat yourself kindly. Buy yourself a Starbucks coffee once a week. Buy yourself an ice cream once a week. Treat yourself to a manicure or pedicure. Do things that make you feel good about yourself because when you feel good about yourself, you're building a healthier self-esteem and you're understanding that you have more opportunities in the future. And so we have gone through three tips. The first is choose an improvement mindset. The second is to push past your limitations. The third is to control your emotions. And the fourth is to be flexible. We set goals and sometimes our goals are so rigid. We put timelines on them that are sometimes impossible. And so we may want to achieve a master's degree and we're just coming out of high school and we want that master's degree to happen in a year. It's impossible. Make sure that your dreams, that the goals that you have for yourself are flexible. And what do I mean when I say that? It means that you can tweak them as time and conditions change. Because as we journey through life, things will change. Circumstances will change, which means that we have to adjust. And when we adjust, we're doing it so that we can become successful in the things that we really want to. So make sure that you're flexible. My fifth and final tip is to create a comprehensive blueprint for your goals. We go through life at a fast pace. We go through life, we have dreams and goals in our heads, and we just go after them. We've not set out a concrete plan for us to follow. And when you fail to plan, you really plan to fail. And so to help you on your journey with overcoming failure, my fifth recommendation is to create an action plan for you to follow. We set goals at the beginning of every year. These are our New Year's resolutions, and we write them down. I want to learn how to cook. I want to learn you know, how to be healthy. We write those things down, but we don't give ourselves an action plan. How do I do this? What are the steps that I need to take? What's the first step? What's the second step? What's the third step? How do I break my goals down so that they are attainable? When I learned this secret about three years ago, it absolutely transformed my life. And so I create blueprints. And it is so encouraging to just tick off those small steps and realize that my journey is happening. That yes, I've done step one, I've completed step two, I've completed step three. And as you complete each of those segments of your goal, you're given more energy, more encouragement, more momentum to continue the journey. So don't have it all up here. Don't just leave it in your mind, which is a machine that's just going and going and going. Make sure that you write your goals out, and for each goal that you have, you have a, an action plan on how you can achieve those goals. As I close out today's broadcast, I want to leave you with one final remember. And that final remember is, failure is not final. It is not final. Because you fail at something today, does not mean that that is the end of the world. T tomorrow is another opportunity. Next week is another opportunity. Soothe yourself, heal yourself, pick yourself up and continue on the journey. I want you to also know that every other person in this world struggles with failure. Every other person. So you're not alone. You're not alone dealing with the emotions that rock you when you lose valuable relationships, when you don't meet your goals, when things don't work out the way that you want them to work out. You are not alone, so do not feel alone. Make sure that you remember, today's failure is tomorrow's success because failure is not final. I am so happy, so very happy that you took a few minutes out of your terrific Tuesday night to sit with me and talk about how to overcome failure. Thank you so much for your time and I look forward to hanging out with you again in the future. If you need more information or more support on how to overcome those challenges, on how to overcome failure or success, 
please log on to my website at duquesadean.com and you can find some resources or you can fill out the contact me field. Reach out to me and I'll be more than happy to help you get past any challenges or any areas that you are stuck. I look forward to hearing from you and have a great evening.